We can also see me at the background here. I'm further away from the actual like, chessboard that we had because I was I was holding the chessboard in front of me. So this is actually like a really good point cloud. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. So in this video here, we're going to talk about point clouds from Studio Vision. At the end of the video here, I'm going to go through all of it, how we can actually like do it in code. But first of all, we're going to talk about like what is point clouds, how can you use their vision to actually like get point clouds, and then we're going to look at the OpenSV documentation that we're going to use. But first of all, we're going to join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, chat us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel here if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee, and everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel, so thank you guys. So first of all here, we're just going to have a couple of slides where we're going to talk about point clouds, stereo vision, and how we can combine them to actually like create point clouds from stereo vision. So here we have an image of a point cloud and the results that we will get later on when we actually like doing it in code. And I'll show you the results and how we can actually like uh, display and show the point cloud that we're creating with our stereo vision setup. So point cloud is these, these uh, different kind of like 3D coordinates. So we have like three coordinates uh, that defines one point in our point cloud. And then when we're mixing all of our points together that we cr create from either like a stereo vision setup or some other different kind of information where we get the X, Y, and C coordinate. Then when we combine all of our points together, we actually like create these point clouds. So our point cloud is actually like just uh, 3D coordinate points in um, in the world or in, in some environment. And then we can add a, like uh, assign an, a color to each of the points in our point cloud or we can actually like make textures on top of our point cloud. So let's say that we're walking around in an environment, creating a point cloud um, of a room and stuff like that. Then we can actually like post in post processing, we can actually like make rendering on top of our point cloud. So we can actually like recreate our whole environment that we're seeing with our cameras or some other sensor where we can get the depth um, depth in the information from and also the, the values or like the, um, the color values. So the RGB values for those points that we get into our point clouds. So we can do a lot of different kind of thing with point clouds and this is just like so so nice and really cool and, and it can be used for a lot of different kind of like real live applications specifically in computer vision and so on. Where we use them for example if we have like a pick and place um, system with a robot arm and you want to grab something uh, from one place and place it to another place then you will need to know like where is that object that we need to grab with the robot arm and we could actually create a point cloud of the environment that the that, that robot can operate in or a point cloud of the object and then we can actually like estimate the pose of our object and the distance to our object and so on. So it can be used for a lot of different kind of things and we're going to look into some of the applications um, in the upcoming videos here as well. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the bell notification under the video so you will get a notification when I upload new videos about like computer vision, point clouds and so on and it just really helps the YouTube channel out in a massive way. So now we're just going to shortly here to talk about like different kind of methods that we can use uh, or different kind of sensors that we can use to actually like get our point clouds. So we have these optical 3D acquisition methods. So we have like this uh, kind of like tree structure where we have these optical 3D acquisition methods. So these are just methods so we can get both X, Y, and Z coordinates of different kind of like points um, in, in our environment. Let's say with our camera, we can get 2D information about different kind of objects. And then when we combine that with stereo vision and we're using two cameras, then we add depth information to our images as well. So we can actually use that to get the 3D um, information about our environment and the point that we actually like seeing. And then we have this X, Y, and Z coordinate for all of our points. We combine them and then we actually like create our point clouds that we can do all the stuff with. So we both have some active sensors and some passive sensors uh, where in this video here we're going to use the passive ones where we're using stereo vision with two cameras. Uh, so it's a passive one, it doesn't shoot out lasers and stuff like that. So we're just using the cameras, we're projecting down um, the, the 3D points to our image plane and then we use both of the cameras to do reprojection again with our disparity maps and also all the coordinates or the, the points that we're seeing with our actual camera. So that is a passive sensor. We also have some approaches with the active sensors, like for example, you could also use like a camera together with a lighter to get the information about depth. So you can use a monocular camera or like a single camera together with a lighter scanner or like a, a radar or something like that, that can get the last dimension. So the C dimension, which is the depth of the pixels that we're actually like seeing with our camera. So the active sensors here where we can use, for example, like multi-pattern structured light, one shot structured light or like time of flight. So it's basically just sensors that shoots out like either maybe like 
uh, sound waves or like laser laser beams and stuff like that and then they will reflect on the objects that we're actually like detecting and we can then track the time of flight for example of that uh, laser beam that we sent out and then we know the depth to each of the individual objects that we're actually like sending these laser beams out to and we can when we combine that with a camera uh, we can actually like get both uh, the two dimension information so the x y coordinate from our camera and then the depth we will get from our um, active sensors that is shooting out laser beams. So now we're just going to talk about camera calibration here and then we're going to talk about rectification because these are essential uh, essential things to do, to do when we're actually like using um, stereo vision to create point clouds because we, will, we, need, we really need like really high accuracy when we want to create them with stereo vision. As you will see later on we don't get that good of a result compared to if you're for example using like um, camera or like active sensors where we actually like have more accuracy on the depth dimension and also if you're using for example deep learning which I will create another video about where we're using the depth maps that we created in the previous videos to actually use a monocle camera together with that um, estimated depth map to, to get the point clouds or like get the information that we can then feed to our point cloud which we also see that we get better results with compared to stereo vision but we also get some really nice uh, uh, results with stereo vision here and it can actually like, be used for a lot of different kind of nice things uh, still. So here, first of all, we need to do camera calibration. So we need to calibrate our cameras. And over here to the right, we're just going to capture different kind of images um, on a, of a chessboard. And then we're going to detect the corners in our chessboard. And then we can use that information to actually like, calibrate our camera because we know the distance between all of the, all of the different kind of like um, edge or like all the different kind of corners that we're detecting in the chessboard. And then we can use that information to actually like project down our um, optic points to the image and then we can reproject them back and see like how good our camera calibration is. So we're going to capture, we're going to do all of it in this video here. So we're both going to do camera calibration, we're going to capture images, we're going to do rectification, so we're actually like rectifying our cameras. So if our stereo vision setup is not 100% uh, aligned in the Y and the C axis, then we can actually like use rectification to do that. So our only variable will be the X axis, which we are going to use to, uh, to get the actual like disparity from. And then from the disparity, we can then use that information to create our point clouds. So when we do camera calibration, we're going to compute the camera matrix, the distortion parameters, rotation and translation vectors. And we actually just do it to remove distortion um, too. So if you have like some kind of like fish eye lens um, effect, as we're also going to see in the next slide, so different kind of like distortion things that we can have on a camera. If you have that, make sure to calibrate your camera beforehand or your results will just be uh, too bad to even be able to use it um, in any applications. So here are some of the different kind of like um, distortion models that we can actually like have. So we have this barrel distortion, which kind of look like this uh, fisheye lens uh, thing, which is the same as pinhusion distortion. Um, so at the bottom here, we also see this tangential distortion, which is actually like the worst distortion that we can get. But if you have like a modern ca camera or like a good, a fairly good camera, you will probably not see tangential distortion because this is when um, we can say see here that the alignment of our lens is not perfectly aligned with um, with the camera or like the ideal plane, so the optical axis um, of our camera. So that's not really common, but we see the barrel distortion and pinhusion distortion um, a lot in our images, as we can also see over here to the right, where we have our original image with this barrel distortion. And when then when we calibrate our camera and undistort our images, we can see that we actually like remove this barrel distortion, and then we can use it to actually like get better accuracy in our images when we're doing, for example, stereo vision, where we want to get uh, the disparity. And also if you want to measure, for example, the sizes of these uh, chessboard fields, you will also need to undistort your image um, and stuff like that because you'll just lose a lot of different kind of, uh, you'll lose a lot of information in the distorted image as you can see to the left because we can see that um, at the end or like at the edges of the image, they actually like have this uh, rounding effect, which is not really good um, for images and our camera. And then after we've calibrated our camera, we're actually like going to rectify our images. So we want to get our cameras 100% aligned because then all of our different kind of like epipolar lines. If you want to know what epipolar lines are, I have videos about that here on the channel as well. But it is just a, like lines that we can search on to actually like get information about where the same point is in both of the images. And when we actually like rectify our images, our um, 
our if fill lines will be horizontal compared to if we're not rectifying them, then they can actually like be uh, screwed or like tilted a bit. Uh, and we don't want that when we're using it for stereo revision. So here we're going to use two cameras. So we have a left camera and we have a right camera. And then we're actually like going to use multi view geometry where we want to create a disparity map. And then from the disparity map, we get the depth information and we can then reproject that out into a point cloud. So the idea behind disparity maps here, or like calculating disparity, is that we have some point here out in the um, in the world coordinate system, and then we project that those down into our image planes of both the left 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 camera and also the right camera. Then we can actually like see we get the displacement here uh, from the from one of the optical axes out to the point that we actually like see um, in our camera or like in our image plane, and that will be the disparity. So the distance from the optical axis from our camera and out to the point uh, that we're actually like, uh, projecting down into our image plane. And then when we want to take the disparity, we actually like, just subtract um, the, the, the X here, XL here minus the XR. So it's, we're actually like, subtracting the two disparities from the optical axis. And then we can use that information to actually like, get the depth information because we're seeing the same point from both of the cameras. And then we create the disparity and by, by disparity, we also get the information about the depth. So how far is the actual like pixel or the object that we're detecting away from our camera. In one of the upcoming videos, we're going to actually like create these depth maps here with neural networks. So we're going to use the meet as neural network as we've used in, one, in some of the previous tutorials here on the channel. We're actually like using just a monocolor camera or like a single camera. Then we're like creating a depth map. So we get an estimation of depth for each of the pixels. So we actually like create this a dense depth map uh, with our neural network. And then we have information and actually like a really good estimate of the depth in our image. And then we're going to combine it with the same kind of things that we're going to do throughout this video here. But in this video, we're using stereo vision. And then in other video, later videos, we're going to use neural networks to actually like do it. It will slow down the process a bit, but our accuracy was also, will also get better um, as you will see later on, and you can actually like, see in this result here that we have a really nice point cloud where we can see my face is actually like in the foreground, and then the background is more like uh, to the back when we are applying this uh, texture or like this um, this rendering here with all the color values together with the point cloud. So before we jump into the code and actually like, do the coding and testing of our program, I'm just going to show you the OpenCV documentation that we're going to use because we're going to use a lot of different kind of classes and methods. Uh, from OpenCV and some of them is actually like really important that you look into the documentation if you're going to tune some of the parameters and also know what data types are the different kind of function, uh, what, do, what do they take and also some of them actually like needs the exact uh, right, um, exact right uh, data type to be able to work. So here we can see the different kind of classes. So we have to use stereo matcher stereo SGBM which is the one that we're going to use in this tutorial. And this is actually like just how we can create these disparity maps with the OpenCV methods. And we can see here that this class just implements the modified, uh, this algorithm here uh, that you can read about if you want to, but in this video, uh, we're just going to use them um, and so on. We can also use the stereo, a stereo BM up here, which is just another algorithm that is implemented. And we can actually like test out both of them and see um, the results and compare them together. But here we are also going to use some, some of the other different kind of functions. So this module I'm inside now is the camera calibration and 3D reconstruction um, like sub module inside of OpenCV. So this is the one that we're going to use because we're going to do 3D reconstruction uh, by using stereo vision. And first of all, we're going to calibrate our camera. So if we just go down to the methods here and we're going to see like some of them that we're going to use. So we're going to use the CV calibrate camera. We can see all the different kind of input parameters I won't go that much into camera calibration in this video. We're just going to run the script. And then if you want to know like in detail what all the lines of code does for camera calibration, make sure to check the camera calibrations video I have uh, out here on the channel. I both have it in C++ and Python. So we're not going to go into details um, with that and the input parameters and stuff like that. We're just going to capture the images, calibrate our cameras, and then we go straight into creating the point clouds uh, with those stereo vision images. So we're also going to use some of the other things here. I'll just jump down to them. Uh, so we're going to use um, down here, we should have like reproject image to 3D. So this function here actually just reprojects at its parity maps into 3D space. 
So we automatically use this uh, stereo STBM that we are going to use. Then we can just pass the output when we have created the right data type as well. Then we can just pass that disparity maps into this function and it would actually like reproject those points out to 3D space. And then we can convert that 3D space into a point cloud and then load that into our program um, where we can actually like display our point cloud that we have created with our stereo vision images. So if we're just going to reproject image here, uh, we can see that one of the one of the things here that you need to make, take care of is that if you're using this stereo, stereo SDBM and the stereo BM here, as we're going to do in this video, then we actually like need to make uh, to be careful here when we're reading the description. And it's also like before you're using a function or like methods in OMCV, make sure to go in here, especially those here that is fairly complex to use. Make sure to go into the documentation and read like line by line what inputs uh, do they take, all the different kind of methods, and then make sure you have the right data data structure and data type uh, that you're using to get the best results. And sometimes you will actually just get errors if you don't have the exact same uh, or like the exact same uh, thing. So here I'm just going to read it up because it is really important. So this bird maps here is a single input, single channel, eight bit unsigned, sixteen bit um, signed. 32 bit signed or a 32 bit floating point disparity map. So in this video here, we're going to use 32 bit floating point disparity map. We can see here that the values of 8 bit, 16 bit signed formats are assumed to have no fractional bits. If the disparity map is 16 bit signed format, which we which will actually get out from this stereo BM here, as computed by stereo BM or stereo SGBM and maybe all other algorithms as well, it should be divided by 16 and scaled to a float before using it here. So we actually need to make sure that we have this 32-bit floating point disparity image, and then we need to divide all of our um, all of our values by 16 here, because we have these fractional bits inside of our disparity mass before we're using this method or like this function here from OMCV, or we'll just get some uh, really bad results at the end. We can also see the output here. So we get an output free D, free channel floating point image. Each element of 3D image here contains 3D coordinates. So we'll both get the X, Y coordinate that we are computed from the disparity map. And if one uses Q here, uh, which we will obtain by stereo rectify. So when we have rectified our images, we will get this uh, reprojection matrix Q. And then we can actually use this uh, Q uh, four by four uh, perspective transformation matrix here. Uh, to actually like reproject out our points into the 3D space from our disparity maps. The output here will actually like be just X, Y coordinates with the corresponding uh, disparity as we can see down here um, at the bottom. So now we know all the theory behind what we're actually like going to do and we also sorted documentation of the different kind of methods and functions that we're going to use from OpenCV. So that is also really important uh, that you know of and that you look into. Uh, but now let's jump into the fun part here where we're actually like going to do the code. We're going to calibrate our images, uh, rectify them, and then we're going to ca stereo calibrate them. So we actually like get our uh, perspective transformation matrix that we can then use together with our disparity maps to reproject our points out to the 3D space or like to our world coordinate system. And then we can create a point cloud from, uh, from that and then display it at the end of the video here. So again, let's jump into the fun part. First of all, we're going to calibrate or like get our calibration images. So we're going to do everything from scratch. This is just a script here. And again, I just want to mention that all of the code here, you can find it in my GitHub. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can just go in there, copy paste the code, run the Python script here, and you will get the exact same results. And you can use it with your own cameras, try it out, see different kind of stuff. The only thing you need to go do is just copy paste them and run the program and everything will work. So here we're just, first of all, we're just going to get our calibration images. We're just going to, if we hit S on our keyboard, it will just save the images into these directories. So we both get images from our left and the right camera. So we're just going to run the program here and actually like get our uh, calibration images. So first of all, we need to get a chessboard. I'm just going to put it up here in the screen and then we're just going to hit S to actually capture the images. So now we have like around six images, which should be fairly enough here. And then when we hit Q on our keyboard or it is escape, then we'll just terminate the program. And over here to the left in our stereo left and stereo right, we can see the actual calibration images uh, that we have like the corresponding calibration images. 
So now we have everything here. We have our calibration images and then we can go into the other uh, calibration script that we have. So this is called stereo calibrate. Again, just go into the GitHub, copy paste everything and you'll be fine. So when we run this program here now, we won't go into details, make sure to check the calibration videos out. I've been through that like a lot of different kind of times. So go check those videos out if you want to know like what, what all this code here does and what all the different kind of like optic points are, what image points are, what rotation vectors, distortion parameters and so on are. We're just going to run the program here and we will get the actual like all the parameters that we need. We can see that we're detecting the, the corners in our chessboard and actually like displaying it as well. Then the output here will be our uh, Q matrix that we're going to use later on and also our camera matrix where we get the focal length here in the X and the Y direction. And we also get um, the, the, um, the placement here of our optical center of our camera. So now we actually like have it at the end of this file here, we're going to uh, to actually like store it in, a, in an OpenCV file or like in this XML file where we can then just, we need to calibrate our camera once, save them in this file and then in our actual like point cloud um, script that we're going to, to use and run, we will just load in those parameters from this file here. So we only need to do camera calibration once and we don't have to do it every time we're running our point clouds or creating our point cloud. So if we're going to the last Python script here, which is the actual like point cloud uh, that will create the point cloud from all the information and our two images. Then first of all, we need to import OMSV, NumPy, uh, Glob here, and then pill, matplotlib, and so on. Then we have a function here to actually just downsample our images. I won't go into details here. This is just how we downsample an, an image because if we just use the original image dimensions, we'll just get like too large of a point cloud at the end. It will just take up too much computational time. We can't really like render it later on in our program if it's too large. So we're going to have this function uh, that can just downscale or like downsample our image. So we reduce the complexity, but we still have, we will still end up with a really nice point cloud um, as you're going to see. Then now we're going to do stereo calibration and rectification of our images as I talked about in the slides. So here we have our camera parameters to undistort and rectify our images. We will just load them in from our uh, stereo map XML file that we stored from our calibration script. Then we're just going to store it here in the stereo map in both for the left and the right image. And we also have our Q matrix here that we're going to use later on as I showed you in the documentation that the rejection uh, function actually like takes these parameters because this is the perspective transformation matrix for our uh, calibrated cameras or like our stereo vision calibrated uh, setup. Then we just have two images here that we're going to load in, which is the actual images that we're going to create the point clouds from. So this will be um, the left image here, the first one. So we're going, we're going to create a point cloud from this image uh, or this image. We can maybe like play around with them and try different kind of images and see what results we get. But I'll just go back here to the point cloud. And then down here, we're just going to undistort and rectify our images. We're going to use this remap, uh, remap function to do that. And now we have actually like our frames undistorted as we're going to see as well. We're going to have a wait key so we can actually see the images undistorted before we're continuing. When we hit a, uh, a key on our keyboard, we will go to the next step, which is actually like downsampling our images by an, an order of three here. So we're going to downsample our images uh, by three. We can also try with two or like four and stuff like that and see the results, but it really depends on your image dimensions um, of your camera that you're, that you're using for this application or project. Then we're going to grayscale our image here, um, here, and then we're just going to show the frames from our downsampled or like downscaled image. So we can actually see how much complexity do we lose, or is this still got good enough, even though we're reducing the image dimensions uh, by here a factor of three. So now we're going to create our disparity maps from stereo vision. So now we have perfect images that is both calibrated or like undistorted and rectified. And then we can now use our images to actually like create the disparity maps by using stereo vision or like the techniques that we went through in the slides. But now we just have the methods and functions from OMCV that we're going to use. So here for each pixel algorithm, we will find the best disparity from zero and larger block implies like smoother uh, disparity maps, though less accurate disparity maps. So if we choose too hard, uh, too large of a block size, we will get less accuracy, but we will get a smoother. And if we have like a smaller one, 
we will get like more clunky one but we will also get a more accurate disparity maps but we we could maybe lose like information and we can also get like a lot of false positives and also pixels where we can't actually like get the depth to um if our block size here is too small so here we're going to set the different kind of parameters that this stereo sdmm create object here uh, takes so we have a block size here with five we have a minimum disparity of minus one 31 here for the maximum number of disparities and then the actual numbers with disparities is the maximum disparities minus um, the minimum disparities and this method here or like this parameter here is need to be it needs to be divisible uh, by 16. So down here we can create the block matching object so we know that we have the stereo stbm create which will actually like be, it be an algorithm that we're going to use to create our stereo um, or like our disparity maps from our two images we just set all the different kind of parameters here you can go into the documentation read about all the input parameters that it takes and what it does and these are the parameters that you're actually like going to tune for your own applications um, and projects that you're going to use here we just have the, another example of this zero bm uh, method or like another algorithm that we can use but the best one i found was was this one up here so try that out first before you're trying out the other one so I got better results with this one up here. I've already tuned the parameters, uh, but you will need to do that by yourself for your own camera, uh, your own applications and project. So now we're just going to dis to act like compute our disparity map. So our disparity map here will just be equal to stereo. So our stereo is our is a stereo SDBM algorithm. Then we just hit uh, dot compute, and then it actually computes the disparity maps. We just pass in the left image and the right image and we get out of disparity maps by this algorithm here. We're going to use matplotlib to actually like slow show our disparity before we're going to generate our 3D point cloud to, um, to actually like verify here that the point cloud will be uh, usable before uh, we're actually like going to create it. So just to show the disparity map and what information we actually like get, what is the accuracy, what is the smoothness of our disparity maps and then therefore our 3D point cloud that we're going to create. So here we're going to create our actual like point cloud from the disparity map that we just got, got up here. So as you can see, it is it is really just like step by step, uh, step by steps that we're taking to actually like do all of these different kind of things. And that's why you can just run the Python script here and it will do everything for you. It's on my GitHub. So here we're just going to get the, the dimensions from our downsample image. And then from the documentation, as I read uh, up for you guys, we need to convert our disparity map to float 32. And then we need to divide by 16 as shown in the documentation here, as I wrote as a comment. And then we're going to print out the D type to make sure that this is the right uh, type that we actually like have for our disparity map. Here, it will just be assigned 16 bit integer at the start. Then we're going to create our disparity maps or like change our disparity maps here by converting it to this float 32. And then we're going to uh, divide our disparity maps here uh, by 16 and make sure that we have 16.0. So we will actually like, get this uh, floating point value here at the end. We can print out the data, data type here again and make sure that this is, this is actually like float uh, 32 that we're working with because we need that when we're going to pass it into our reproject image to 3D function here down here in the next line of code. So now we're going to reproject our points into 3D. So we have all the points here stored later on when we actually like call this function. So all of our point clouds or all of our points with the X, Y coordinate and also the, the C, a C, which is the depth uh, depth that we get. We all of, all of the information will be stored in this variable here that we can use later on. We just set that equal to CV2 that reproject image to 3D. So this takes in the disparity maps and also the perspective transformation matrix um, to actually like reproject our image into the 3D world we can set the handle missing values equal to false. So if we can uh, calculate the depth uh, for some of the pixels in our image, if we set it here equal to true here, it will just set the depth equal to 10,000, but we don't want that because we will just get a really uh, weird point cloud. So we just set it, handle missing values here equal to false, which is also the default uh, parameter. But you can try to set it true and see what results you get. So now we're going to get the actual like, colors of our reprojected points. So we both want to get the actual like uh, 3D or like free uh, free co coordinates for our uh, points in our point cloud, but we also want to get um, the corresponding color for that point that we're projecting out in the 3D space. 
so we can then do this texture or rendering of our actual like point cloud later on. So here we're just going to get the color of our reprojected points. We're going to convert our image here from RGB or like from BGR to RGB. So we get the RGB values instead of the BGR values. So we'll get the correct colors that we then load, la uh, load in later on in MeshLab. So here we're just going to get rid of the points with value zero. So if we can calculate the depth, we'll just delete those from our disparity maps and that will be stored here in the mask of our map. And then we can mask our colors and the points here. So our output points that we're going to create uh, into our point cloud file will just be the, all of our 3D points that we got from the reprojection. And then we're just going to take the mask map here. So this is just how we get rid of all the values or like all the points with value zero in the, in the depth. Then we can also get the color. So this colors here will be our color image again in RGB. And then we just take the mask map here again because we're just going to take the corresponding uh, corresponding points as we did up in this output points. We're going to take this exact same points, but then we're going to take the colors of those points and store it in this variable. So now we both have all the output points and all the colors for our corresponding output points as well. The last thing that we're going to do before we're running our program is to create this function that can actually create a point cloud file. So here we're just going to use this function here. It's just like how we can create this uh, PLY um, format for using uh, in our point cloud. So here we just need to like reshape our colors. We need to pass in our vertices, which is our actual like points, our colors and the file name that we want um, to, to actually like generate our uh, point cloud file with. Then we have all the vertices here, which is just like um, horizontal stacks here of all the vertices so all the points that we pass to this function then we have a PLY header here where we just set up these different kind of things so we have our x value our y value our c value and then we have the values here for our color so we have red green and the blue channel and this will just be the header of our PLY file and then all the points will come after that so we're just going to open up the file and then we're just going to write out this header together with all the points and all the corresponding colors to those points in our point cloud. Then we're just going to save it. We're going to pass in a name here. So output file will be equal to pointcloud.ply. And then we just call this function with our output points, with our output colors, and also the name of the output file. And then when we do that, it will just store the whole point cloud in our in this file and then we can lay, load this file here into another program where we can load in point clouds and then we can do rendering and um, rendering and texturing on top of that later on in our program so now we're going to actually run a program here and see the results that we get so first of all here we just get out this information again so first of all we're just going to get in our images before we actually like undistorting them and rectifying our image so these are just the original images that we have loaded in from our camera and we're just going to use um, a sample here of our calibration images so when i hit q here we will calibrate the or like undistort our images and also rectify them so here we have our uh, rectified images we can see that we have this like a black box here at the, um, at the at the boundary here of our image because we have actually like rectified um, our image so all our lines is horizontal and we can then look at the only disparity or like the change in the act x axis as I showed you in the slides. If we're going to hit Q here again, we will now create our disparity map from these two images that we have rectified and undistorted. And then we can see also the, the downsample images up here. You can probably like see them because we have downsampled them by a factor of three, but we still have the information. We have the chessboard, we have me, we have like the TV in the background, and then we also have the white wall. When I hit Q here again, we have now created the depth map. We can see that we get some white pixels up here. So the brighter the pixels are, like the closer it, they are to the camera, we can see that information up here is the chessboard, which is actually like the foreground of this image. Um, it will actually like be the closest to the camera, which is uh, also correct. We can see at the top here, we get some uh, black pixels, which is actually like um, here from the rectification. Down here, we can see that me in the background, it is a bit darker because I'm further away uh, from the camera. Over here to the left is actually like just the depth pixel, depth pixel, so we can't get the depth to these points because we're just uh, restricted from our uh, stereo vision images or like our stereo vision setup. Uh, so you can play around with that as well and also the distance between your cameras and so on to get like either like more or less of the disparity or depth mapped here at the end. 
So now we have the figure one here. When I hit Q again, we can see here that we get out an integer 16 and then we have float 32. So these are just the data types that we printed out. And now we have actually created this file. So we have the point cloud.ply. If I just go into the folder, we can go down here and actually see this point cloud.pli. So this will be the actual point cloud file that we can then use. We can see all the like the header file here. We get the X, Y, and the Z coordinate. And then over here to the right, we get the corresponding uh, color values for those points. So this is the whole point cloud here that we have. We can just scroll down here and see all the results. If we go up here at the top, we can see that we have um, 2,811 points in our point cloud that we can then um, load into another program uh, and then apply filtering or like texturing, filtering, uh, rendering and so on and what you're going to do in another video we're going to talk about like how we can actually like uh, post process our point clouds how we can do like filtering of our point clouds we're maybe going to use the point cloud library to do that and do a lot of other different kind of stuff so make sure to, to, to hit the subscribe button as well we're going to go more into details about point clouds and so on and how we can actually use the results from this video here to do other different kind of things so we're now open up mesh lab here, which is just a program that we can use to actually like load in our point clouds. So we just go up to the file here, import mesh, and then into our directory. So we have this point cloud PLY file, and then we're just going to hit open and it will actually like open our point cloud. We can see we get some points down here, if you can see that, uh, which is just really far away from the other points. But if I just click over here uh, of those points, we will actually like get closer. I'll just rotate. I'll just rotate the frame here a bit so we actually like get the correct one, the correct orientation. So here we actually like have our image. Uh, so this is actually like an image. We can see our chessboard here. We know that the brighter the pixel values are, the closer they are. And that is also why we get like this kind of like screwed uh, point cloud uh, at the end results here. We can also see me at the background here. I'm further away from the actual like chessboard that we had because I was, I was holding the chessboard in front of me. So this is actually like a really good point cloud. We can even see like the detail here with the orange pen here um, on my iPad. We can see the chessboard. We even have like a, a, a variation of the depth here in the actual like chessboard because it was tilted a bit uh, backwards. So it's actually like it actually like things or it is actually like a really good estimation of the depth here as well. We can see me in the background. I'm a bit further away. Even my arm is closer than my face, which was also correct. And my arm was even like further away from uh, from at the actual like top of the iPad and it was more like aligned with the bottom of the iPad here of our chessboard. So we get some really nice accuracy here, accuracy here as you see we can even scroll like closer here and then we can see all of the individual points here in our point cloud. We can see even the colors so we can see here that I have this uh, skin color down here at the bottom we can see some black pixel values as well we can see the white pixel values here for the actual like, chessboard so this is just a point cloud that we can play around with get different kind of information on we can filter it we can get better results and so on and we also saw the black pixels as you might see up here that we have these points that's just projected like really far away from all the other points because in our depth map or in the disparity map, we, we had these black pixels at the top of our images, which means that they are like the first away that uh, that they can get. But again, this is a really nice result and we're going to use, use it for a lot of different kind of things. We're going to create more examples and so on. So I'm really excited for creating more videos. We're going to do it with the neural networks as well as I talked about in the start of this video, where we're going to use Neural networks with a monocolor camera to actually like get more and better and precise, uh, preciser, uh, more precise depth map. So we actually get a better point cloud here at the end. But if we have this orientation here, it is actually like a really good point cloud. We can even like see the whole image. We just get like cut off like the last part here as we did in the disparity map. But the rest is really, really nice. I'll, I'd say here we get some really nice details, even though we downsample our image by a factor of three. So thank you guys for watching this video here and rent the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. Um, so I'm, I'm currently doing this computer vision tutorial here where we're now into point clouds, stereo vision, how we can use it and actually like 3D reconstruction and so on. But if you want to know more into details about like image processing, more like basic theory behind computer vision and so on. 
make sure to check my tutorial, computer vision tutorial out or my deep learning tutorial. I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.